hey good day guys welcome again to my channel i'm joshua the designer and in today's tutorial i'll be showing to you how to design a pad footing and this is alternatively known as an isolated pad base right so i'll be showing you in simple steps on how to design pad foundation footing well in this tutorial we'll just um, be able to show ourselves how to determine the area of the pad footing and the subsequent tutorials on this particular subject will be designing um, for our flexural reinforcement and some other stuff right so straight up we have a typical example here where we'll be um, going through to achieving a design for this right so um, in this particular theory theoretical example we have a 400 meter millimeter square column and it carries a dead load of 1050 kilonewton so if we may put that down we have a dead load of 1050 kilonewton then we have a life load that's the impulse load also to be 300 kilonewton right then we have the safe bearing capacity right so bearing capacity to be 170 kilonewton per meter square right so um we are to design a square pad putting to resist the load assuming the following parameters right so we have the fcu to be 35 newton per millimeter square then we have our uh, fy to be 500 and then um, the dead load and post load as suggested from the question then from there we'll move on right um so see since we have these values now we can just proceed the first thing to note is that in the design of your pad foundation the serviceability serviceability load is used right so the serviceability load is used that is to say that we are trying to use the load that has not been factored so you can call this the unfactored load right so um, going forward now we can just get straight into the business and um, as we've been given earlier the dead load and life load from um, uh, analysis or whatever it is that um, give us these um, values um, is a product of the unfactored load so the factor of safety have not been applied to any of this load so we can actually go ahead to obtain our total load acting on the base or that we acting on the base right so we have um, 1.0 gk so we're applying a factor of one to the dead load and a factor of one also to the life load so it's more or less saying that we are using the gk plus qk right so being that um, we're using the unfactored load right so what we have now from here would be um 1050 plus 300 so with this would have the value of our n which is a total load to be 1350 kN now listen this that we have here at this point is the total load that is being um, transmitted from the other um, superstructure elements right so um, then it is the one being imposed on the isolated part itself without the addition of the self weight of the part base so before we can go ahead we would like to allow for certain percentage certain percentage of um, the part base weight the self weight 
right so that we can estimate correctly so allowing for 10 percent of n of the total load acting on the base right that is being transmitted from the superstructure right now so allowing 10 percent of n for self weight for self weight of the footing would have 1.1 of the value of n so that would give 1.1 multiplied by 1350 and that would give us a final value of 1485 now this value that we have now is inclusive of the self width of the base and this is exactly what we used to apply uh, what would apply to get our base area right so to go forward now from here would have since we have the value of our n to be 1485 kilonewton with the self weight of the base inclusive now we can obtain the area of base Now the area of base is uh, obtained in a very simple way, which is the ratio of the the load to the self um, to the soil bearing capacity to the safe bearing capacity, right? So we have one four eight five divided by the safe bearing capacity I've been given already 170. Now that will give us a value 8.7 meter square. Now this is the required the required area. This is required. All right. So to provide um, the base area now. What we we'll do now is to to find respective length for the size of the square footing. You know, we are designing for a square part footing, so we have square root of eight point seven. So this would um, give us around two point nine meter, right? So um, we can provide now since we have. The length of respective sides, so we can say tend provide a three meter by three meter square base. Now the area provided now. Will be nine meter square. Now it's such that our provision is slightly above the required area, so that we can be sure of the um, part base being able to accommodate that load in question. Right. So um, this just simply how to obtain the area of your part base um, respective to the load that is being applied and the soil bearing capacity. Now, um, before we um, close this tutorial and um, we'll be expecting further design procedures on this subject, um, I'd just like to show us how to confirm if the assumed additional loadings for our, for our self weight of the base, the one we did here, if the additional self weight we obtained here right is enough or sufficient in real time right so this is how we do that to confirm the assumed additional load this is how we confirm so what when we take 
the thickness or the depth whatever you want to call it of the pad foundation to be 300 right so to obtain the self weight now you have to multiply the area obtained in our design right now multiply by the thickness and multiply by the density of concrete so with this now we have the area obtained 9 the thickness 0 0.3 meters and the density of concrete as usual 24 so you should obtain 135 right so comparing two things now we want to compare this 135 to that that has been assumed right so the one we assumed formally is um one for is obtained by subtracting the initial weight or the initial load rather that has been transmitted from the superstructure from that which we obtained after we have added the self weight they assume 10 percent of the self weight of the base so we just subtract that 1485 minus 1350 1350 was initial one the initial value for the load and 1485 was the one we obtained after we added 10 percent of the load for the self weight of the base right so this we obtained six um this will obtain 135 rather this is 185. I think we made a little mistake here. This should give us 68 and not 135. This should give us 64.8. Right, so comparing these two, we can deduce a conclusion that 64.8 which is the original or actual self, self weight of the base is less than that which we assumed which is 135 so we can say our assumption is okay but another thing that might change in the lines of our designs and that that that's exactly why you should stay around um, while the designs proceed in subsequent tutorial videos is that um, the assumed thickness of our base now is subject to verification once we start to design flexural reinforcement and when we check for shear. So we we'll need to confirm if the thickness is sufficient for the load and for the area that we are considering. Right, until then, we will continue this particular tutorial. I am Joshua, the designer. Do well to like this video. And if you are joining us for the first time, you can use the subscribe button. Share with your friend that should get better in structural engineering. And we'll see you next time. Bye.